Good day, everyone. My name is Basha Karki. I would like to start by an acknowledgement of country. I'm speaking from the lands of Vidigal people, where my home is, uh, and I would like to pay my respects to the elders past, present and emerging. Today with me, I have James Tin, Senior Director of Global Security and Fraud Solutions at, at F5. Welcome to All About Data, James. Thank you very much for having me on board, BK. Very happy to be here. Great. Well, I was going to ask, do you prefer to be called James or JT? Because you you reference to me as BK. So is it fair that I call you JT then? Yeah, that's <laughs> fine. Absolutely. <laughs> Great. Um, thank you, JT. I've known you ever since I've known you for the last, I don't know, almost a decade. You've always been in the space of security. Um and now I see that at F5, your role in corporate security and fraud-related solutions. Um, could you tell us a bit more about what your role focuses on and what that, what that means? Sure. So my role is essentially using data science uh, with artificial intelligence and machine learning to identify fraudulent requests. Unfortunately, the attackers are leveraging ML and AI to target our customers like banks, airlines, transaction websites, uh, e-commerce. And they're doing account takeovers, they're exfiltrating data, they're uh, stealing money. And so essentially our capability uh, tries to keep up to date with the attackers to automatically stop these transactional frauds. Well, that's very interesting, JT. You know, I was going to ask... I knew our conversation was going to be around AI ML, right? But you've changed the uh, direction of the conversation saying that the attackers actually use AI ML uh, in their attacks. Tell us a bit more about that. Yeah, so a good example is uh, if you've ever gone to a website and you've had to go through a recapture, you have to click on all the zebra crossings or traffic lights or buses. <laughs> you know, that stops, um, well, it's meant to stop the automated attacks. But unfortunately, the attackers have these tools that use uh, ML for optical character recognition, Mm -hmm. and they get through 99.6% of these without any problems. So when you go to a website, it's actually not stopping the attackers. It's actually preventing more friction for the legitimate human trying to get in. So unfortunately, these uh, recapture things aren't really that useful anymore. Yeah, a lot of uh, frustration. Absolutely. I understand. I've been through it. It's just like how many traffic lights, you know, <laughs> crazy stuff. Um, so a really interesting point, and we'll come to, you know, what are the measures that a, a cybersecurity solution um, uh, provider takes takes into account when, you know, trying to fight those uh, attackers. But um, give us a context of what your conversations around fraud detection management are uh, and who needs them? Who are you talking to right now? Yeah, so anyone that has a transaction, has a login, who uh, has a search function, um, So usually the e-commerce, financial, um, property listings, job listings. Um, So anyone that really makes money on their website uh, really wants to ensure that uh, that money doesn't stop and the attackers take them down. So it goes from a whole breadth of different types of attacks. So we provide protection against DDoS attacks, Mm -hmm. application layer attacks, and the ones that I'm focusing upon are the, the more advanced ones that are bypassing most of the security controls that a bank has in place at the perimeter today. Yeah. These are the exciting ones. That's, that's why I'm involved. Yeah, well, I, I like that you said bank because uh, my focus is also FSI customers. And I know there's a lot of, especially when you come to online transaction is one thing, right? You're buying food, you're buying shopping, clothing and all of that. But then when it comes to protecting your, um, you know, your salary, your your life savings that's that sits at a bank. I think that that's a whole new ball game, isn't it? I think that kind of you know leads us to this discussion around what actually does a fraud detection solution look like, uh, right? Take take us through, um, and and you touched on automation as well, right? Take us through what a good fraud detection management solution look like. So we're a new and -and up-and-coming fraud detection platform. So there's legacy platforms out there that uh, uh, look at transactions. They also look at after the event. So a lot of the fraud platforms do something after the actual fraud has taken place. So that could be clawing back funds. Uh, But what we're doing is actually uh, in real time 
So what we do is we inject a code into a web page mm -hmm. or an application, and we're looking for telemetry that confirms whether they're human or non-human or they're fraudulent. That data coming in at the edge, uh, how are you processing it? Do you need that processing at the at the edge? Very fast processing on the device, for example, you know, or or your um, remote office, for example, you know, and then creating that good data set in your in your data lake, for example, core, right? So what I'm trying to get at is, you know, NetApp helps our customers at the edge to the core and to the cloud. So you talked about AI ML modeling and, you know, training those models. Um, you've got to have a good set of data, but you've got also got to make sense of that data. So you could have a data lake with lots of um uh, you know, ingestion coming in, let's say from IoT or even Kafka bus or whatever messaging that could be at the edge, have it delivered onto your core um, and create that modeling of what could look like a fraud and have that, um, you know, relearn, learn and relearn over time and perhaps even use some workloads um, in the cloud to run that analytics if you don't have that, you know, if you need that capability in the cloud as well. Um, how, how, how does that story kind of, uh, um, you know, landing on you and what do you think of, of that, JT? Yeah, so that describes the scenario of what we're doing. So we're getting telemetry. So we're getting telemetry from you know, billions of devices, uh, billions of transactions a day. And it goes into a big data lake. And, you know, humans... Can manually sift through it with algorithms, but you know it's really not that effective. So we just leverage the ML the training mo models, and we train the the ML models to identify um, what is real fraud. So, for instance, there's a I think called a fraud file that um, the fraud platforms will have, and that will be the confirmed fraud for the past uh, 30, 60, 90 days. And we yeah. import that, and th that trains the ML algorithms on what is uh, the real stuff that they need to focus upon. Uh, mm -hmm. So it hones their, um, the, the target onto um, those types of attacks and looks for attacks around that. Yeah, absolutely. And then you're also looking at more incoming data and then, you know, making that model even smarter um, as time goes by, right? 100%. Yeah, the more attacks that we see, um, the more traffic that comes in, the higher the efficacy our platform ends up becoming. Yeah. So if there's a customer in Estonia that has a, a zero day and we do the investigation on that uh, and then we can push out configuration changes so every customer will then end up getting that protection. Yeah. Well, that's amazing, JT. It's been a really fascinating conversation. Um, what's, what's your key takeaway for our audience around fraud detection? Um, that the attackers are way ahead of the uh, protectors and... Um, I would try to recommend uh, automating as much stuff as possible because when you're in the SOC and you're inundated with noise, you're probably not going to make a, a great decision when you're under duress. So you need to uh, step away from that and in a calm state, uh, understand the, the landscape and then implement um, automation uh, such that you don't have to be uh, bogged down with uh, the, all the noise on a day-to-day -day basis. Awesome. Thank you, JT. Really great chatting with you. And I'll speak to you soon again. Awesome. Thank you, BK. Bye-bye.